You're listening to Simply the Best. Great companions are on the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, with Sheikh Saadullah Khan. This podcast is brought to you by Seekers Hub Global. You can subscribe to this podcast and all of our other podcasts on iTunes, Google Play, and on our website, seekershub.fm. Visit seekershub.org for free online courses, our reliable answer service, and engaging media. Um Salama, the knowledgeable women's rights activist. Hind binti Umayya, the daughter of Suhail bin Umayya ibn al-Mughira and Atiq bint Amir. Her noble family was known for their hospitality and generosity, and her father, Abu Umayya, was lovingly nicknamed Zad al-Raqib, meaning the provider for the needs of the travelers. She was married to her cousin Abdullah bin Abu al-Asad. And when the Prophet announced his mission, Hind bint Umayya and Abdullah were among the earliest couples to embrace Islam, probably the second family after Sumayya and al Yasir. As soon as the news of embracing Islam by these people, the Quraysh reacted with frenzied anger. They began hounding and persecuting Hind binti Umayyah and her husband. But the couple neither wavered nor despaired and remained steadfast in the new faith. When life became unbearable in Mecca for the new Muslims, the Prophet gave permission for some to migrate to Abyssinia and she and her husband were among the first people to migrate. It meant abandoning her spacious home, giving up the traditional ties of lineage and the honor for something new, hoping in the pleasure of Allah and the reward of Allah. So they gave up so much. But due to extreme pressure on the Muslims in Mecca, there were those who were of the migrants to Ethiopia, Abyssinia leaving everything behind, their homes and their comforts, in order to practice their faith in freedom. It was in Abyssinia that the daughter Salama was born, hence the title Um Salama, the mother of Salama. Their son Umar was also born in Abyssinia and much later became the governor of Bahrain under Sayyidina Umar. Despite the protection Um Salama and her companions had received in Abyssinia, the desire to return to Mecca was always great, to be near the Prophet, to be near the source of revelation. Having returned to Mecca from Abyssinia after about seven years, they witnessed a more systematic and organized form of oppression. So when the Prophet decided to migrate to Medina, they too migrated, but now for the second time. At the time when her family decided to leave Mecca for Medina and migrate, a tragedy befell them. Abu Salama already prepared the place and secured everything for them as a ride and he went on leading the way towards Medina. Um Salama and her son Umar were then held back by some need and then they also took off to Mecca. Unfortunately, they were stopped by the Meccans. Some men from her husband's clan took the son away and her own clan, in fact, held her hostage. Suddenly, in a few moments, she said, I found myself alone and lonely. My husband headed for Medina, she says by himself, and his clan had snatched my son away from me. My own clan, Panu Makhzum, overpowered me and forced me to stay. فكنت أخرج كل غدات فأجلس بالأبطاح مكان في ضاحية مكة فما أزال أبكى حتى أمسي سنة أو قريبا منها. I went out, she says, at noon every day to that place where my son was taken away and sat in that spot where this tragedy occurred. I would recall those horrible moments and weep until night. And she said, I did this almost for a year. Eventually, due to the intercession, intercession of some people, she was allowed to go and unite with her husband, Abu Salama, in Medina. When she joined her husband in Medina, they were so overwhelmed and she wanted to make a pact with her husband that neither of them would ever remarry in case the other one died. He told her, No. Allahum marzuq, um salama, ba'di rajulan khayram minni, la yahjinuha wa la yudhiha. Allah, please grant um salama, if I pass away, a better husband after my death, someone who will neither make her sad nor cause her any harm. Soon after her, their reunion, Abu Salama, Abdullah, passed away at Battle of Uhud or immediately thereafter. Here she was again in a foreign town but now without any family and with kids. The Prophet then proposed to her through a companion and she responded, 
O Prophet of Allah, I have age against me. I am extremely jealous and I have children. He said, as for your jealousy, I pray to Allah, ayyudhib anki dhalik, that Allah takes this jealousy away from you. Regarding your age, I also have the same problem. I'm also not too young. Regarding your family and your dependents, usratuk, usrati, kulluhum ayyi mu'nitihim ala, ala Allahi wa rasuli. All of them, your family is my family. They are responsibility of Allah and his messenger. Um Salma possessed outstanding judgment, had a swift power of reasoning and an unparalleled ability to formulate correct opinions. Um Salma acted as the Prophet's advisor during negotiations concerning the Treaty of Hudaybiyah with the Meccans in the 60th of Hijrah. She had a clear-sighted vision that led her to commitment to uprooting uh, of unjust traditions and retrogressive tribal customs of her time. Once she expressed a concern regarding the prevalent chauvinism to the Prophet that some, may, that some men harbored and that some women felt that men were being chauvinistic, Allah revealed the verse, إِنَّ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَالْقَانِتِينَ وَالْقَانِتَاتِ Surely the men who submit to Allah, the women who submit to Allah, the believing men, the believing women, the obeying men and the obeying women. Allah mentions 10 or 11 categories of male and female. Allah promises them forgiveness and a tremendous reward. In other words, you could see here that hers was like a kind of a veritable protest movement for the women. And she did not hesitate to speak up on behalf of the ladies who felt aggrieved. Besides many ahadith being narrated by her, she was gifted in judgment, polished in communication, and dignified in her demeanor. She had a habit of speaking about what she was knowledgeable, and such was the depth of her insight that numerous companions and those who met the companions, the tabi'een, learned from her. Among the sahaba who learned from her, Anas bin Malik, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Aisha, Binti Abu Bakr, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, radiyallahu anhum. And of the tabi'een, those people who met the sahaba, Sa'id bin al-Musayb, wa Sulaiman bin Yasar, wa Abdullah bin Abi Malika, wa Amir al-Sha'bi, wa Atai bin Abi Rabih, Nafi' bin Jubayr bin Mut'im, and Mujahid bin Jabbar. Mujahid, the last one, is considered one of the foremost scholars of Quran, of Qiraat, of Hadith, and of Islamic law, from which all subsequent imams took. Mujahid was also a student of Umm Salma and Abdullah ibn Abbas, who himself learned from Umm Salama. By 622 Al-Hijri, she and Imam Hussain were the only remaining people of the Prophet's household. Imam Hussain, Prophet's grandson, and Umm Salama, Prophet's wife, the last surviving members of the Prophet's household. She was very shocked at the killing of Imam Hussain, who grew up in her house, and his martyrdom had a tremendous impact on her. She passed on soon after that incident at Karbala, she passed away in Medina at the age of 84. The last of the Prophet's household to leave this world, and she lies buried in al baqi Cemetery in Medina. Historians and scholars refer to Umm Salama as al zawja al-Wafiyah, al-Nashita Ijtima'iyah, ma'abasirati ra'i'ah, wal-Mu'allima al-Mujahida, al-Muhajira al-Sabira, the loyal wife, social activist, brilliant with foresight, a teacher, a warrior, a migrant who was patiently persevering. Thank you for listening to Simply the Best. Great companions are on the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, with Sheikh Saadullah Khan. If you like this podcast, we'd appreciate if you left us a review on iTunes and Google Play. Help Seekers Hub build a global Islamic seminary and spread the light of guidance to millions around the world by supporting us through monthly donations by going to seekershub.org donate. Your donations are tax-deductible in the U.S. and Canada.